hey, thanks for taking a moment watching this video. I hope you find it helpful. What we're gonna do here is I'm going to actually use my iPad to draw out the corticospinal track for motor involvement. As I get started, don't forget to click subscribe, give it a little thumbs up, and uh, turn on the notifications there so you don't miss out on any future videos. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to use this drawing here to uh, draw out the corticospinal track. So as you probably already know, the corticospinal tract is the main motor pathway by which the brain controls motor function in the, in the body. And we're gonna keep it pretty, pretty general today. Um, we could get into some pretty in-depth neuroanatomy, but we're gonna keep it rather broad today, okay? So as you can see here on my drawing, um, we've got the, the brain up here in the top left, we've got the brain stem as part of that, and uh, the spinal cord. So for the corticospinal tract, all right, uh, the, the upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron carry the signal from the central nervous system where it starts up in the primary motor cortex down to the motor end plate where the lower motor neuron synapses on the muscle itself. And so the corticospinal tract then is made of two neurons. Well, it's two neurons in length, okay? Upper motor neuron starting in the primary motor cortex going down into the spinal cord at whatever spinal cord level is needed, and then it synapses on the lower motor neuron in the anterior horn of the spinal cord, and that lower motor neuron then leaves the spinal cord out through a peripheral nerve or out through the spinal nerve root. So let's say we're gonna draw out the corticospinal tract for uh, the, the, the neurons that are going to control a muscle down in the, in the foot, okay? So if you remember your homunculus, uh, the, the motor neurons, upper motor neurons that help control the foot are here in the medial aspect, right? They're in the paracentral lobule component of the, the brain. And so there's the cell body of our upper motor neuron. We'll, we'll draw the upper motor neuron in blue. That the axon then is going to travel through the corona, radi corona radiata down through the internal capsule Remember, here's our internal capsule between some of those deep gray structures like the globus pallidus and the, the thalamus. All right, the, the, the different parts of the basal ganglia there with the putamen and, and globus pallidus and caudate. And so as this uh, upper motor neuron axon descends down through the internal capsule, it also travels down through the midbrain, like we've drawn here. And as it travels down through the midbrain, it's actually traveling, traveling in a the anterior part of the midbrain called the cerebral peduncle. The cortical spinal tract passes through there, so it's a big white matter tract, right? And then it passes through the pons as well, so this is our pons. And at this point, the upper motor neuron is still on the ipsilateral side, meaning it's still on the same side of the brain and brainstem from which it originated. But as it gets to the medulla, and specifically in the lower part of the medulla, it decussates, meaning it crosses midline. And so we, there in the lower medulla is where we have what's called cortical spinal decussation, or sometimes the cortical spinal tract is also known as the pyramidal tract, and that would be our pyramidal decussation point. So lower medulla, that upper motor neuron axon is going to cross midline, and now it's going to be traveling down the contralateral side of the spinal cord. Okay. And as that main part of the cortical spinal tract descends down that contralateral spinal cord, it actually is traveling kind of out here in the white matter. If this is a, a slice of our spinal cord, it's, it's out here on the lateral aspects uh, of the white matter of the spinal cord traveling down. And so remember, we're heading down towards our foot, so it's going to go through the, the cervical uh, region of the spinal cord, down through the thoracic region of the spinal cord, and eventually... We're gonna get down here into the lumbar region of the spinal cord. And at this level, as you can see here, we're gonna be coming in from above. It's gonna come in like this. And at that level, let's say it's going to be traveling down the L4 or L5 dermatome or down that myotome, right? That spinal nerve root that goes to that area. It will turn out of, the upper motor neuron will turn out of the cortical spinal tract there on the lateral side and will enter into the anterior horn of the gray matter there or the ventral horn. This is where it will then synapse on the cell body or the soma of the lower motor neuron that's in that anterior horn and the axon from that lower motor neuron is then going to exit through the anterior rootlet here 
which joins with the spinal nerve and it will travel out then down to the motor end plate or the section of the muscle to which it's destined to synapse and, and releasing acetylcholine there at the neuromuscular junction to cause muscular contraction. So the red here then is our lower motor neuron and the blue is our upper motor neuron. So two cell lengths, two neurons in length and that makes up our upper, excuse me, our corticospinal tract. Okay, the main part of our corticospinal tract, starting on one side of the brain, descending down through the brain stem, down to the bottom of the brain stem at the caudal or lower medulla, decussating over onto the contralateral side, still continuing with that same axon, uh, all the way down into the spinal cord to whichever level it needs to be to synapse on the destined lower motor neuron, in this case the leg like we've drawn in the, down towards the foot, and will synapse on the lower motor neuron there in that spinal cord segment, uh, which will then exit out through the anterior root, joining with the spinal nerve root and heading out. So two cells long. I hope that helps. Um, I would recommend you practicing drawing it out yourself this way so that you really get it down. So notice one side of the brain controls the extremity, the muscles for the extremities on the other side of the body. All right, I hope that was helpful. I hope it answered any questions you may have had. If you have any questions, you can put those down in the comments. Uh, additionally, uh, feel free to check out some of my other videos. I'll, I'll have another video that also explores some of the sensory pathways. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit subscribe.